enter. A, a, all four pillars have equal opportunities. Uh, what I have seen most of the time in India is uh, a lot of startups try to develop, uh, you know, in this, these type of technologies are brought in by startups again. And then there is even uh, a, a startup company which brought a very nice uh, coloring process. So, uh, especially on the medical orthosis area, there's a lot of things which startups can do, definitely. And also, uh, one interesting, uh, you can develop what type of, you know, focus you want to do. Application, the more you de develop, the more successful it can be. I know there's a company in Australia which happens. There are companies which are developing different types of monitoring systems because during the print, since it's generative, opportunities are huge. Uh, so I think um, depending on the expertise, any startup which really can focus and create a value can definitely... I Hence, a uh, <clears throat> uh, lot of applications have already been uh, loaded uh, uh, from these three industries. Uh, so right now, so coming to the technology side, I think uh, uh, Binderjet has a, a great, uh, these three industries getting the parts into serial production. Amit, do you see any major change on the software? Uh, wherever, like, plus the tooling industry, Sandvik is investing big time in um, uh, metal printing. So tooling industry, because I, I was reading an article and they said that um, uh, when you 3D print a part, the, the liquid... So I think in the interest of time, if anyone wants to ask any questions to the panelists, then... Uh, oh. Is it audible? Yes. Uh, I'm Abibu Mahapatra. I represent the company 3Idea Technology Mumbai. We are into 3D printing business for the last uh, seven years into polymer segment. My question is uh, to uh, like uh, Anand as well as uh, Mr. Yathiraj in the segment. Yeah. Thank you. Anand, if you want to answer, then Yathiraj can also add. So, uh, if you look from the point is, uh, most, most applications, there is an allowance given and then uh, they do a fine, finally fine machining. If that application can allow fine machining to happen, come down to a very, very small tight tolerances, it's possible. There are also some applications which... The number of the machine is a different animal. So you have to understand what is the characteristics of that machine and characteristics of that, the end use part, right? And that is where the, the conventional machining actually comes into play. I think uh, your question is pretty valid, but it's more aligned to the application. So what exactly you want to manufacture, you know? So if you're looking at manufacturing an implant, then there's a different technology. We are basically manufacturing polymer machines in Make in India. So my question is to all the panelists uh, that uh, we are far away in, the, in terms of additive manufacturing. fold. So there are many kind of challenges actually. Uh, regulatory authority is a big challenge. Standardization is a big challenge. Lack of skilled manpower is a big challenge, you know. I can start developing tomorrow. I need the full ecosystem around the area to develop a specific machine. A machine may have processors, scanners, lasers, a uh, lot of other components, critical components, which may not. A small startup in Hyderabad. It's been five years I've been in this industry, uh, been as a startup in, the, in India. Uh, I'll start probably can add on to this one. So, where you are manufacturing the entire component by powder bed and then clubbing it with subtractive, the, the handling of the powder... When you look into hybrid, it's not a new concept. I mean, I remember 15 years back, a company called Matsura. With hybrid, definitely seems to have more applications uh, and um, because uh, you, 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 are, you tend to make larger structures, you need to additive or 3D printing. But even here, we are discussing you know, which technology should go. But if it's replacing some very highly, um, you know, rod type of properties. Or is the internal part, right? You would finish a part where it is visible. Uh, you can do away with the unfinished part if it's premier or corporate. Because as the discussions happened on corporate point of view just before, but what exactly the take uh, as per the plan for the next year, as you mentioned, it will be the starting for uh, academia or corporate. It will be both. So we are the students which are coming from university may not be right fit for them to be employed right away in the industry. So to f fill that gap, so NCAM will be which is joining us from next month and we will uh, go live very soon in that direction. Great sir, thank you. And one more question. Uh, generally, uh, till now the discussions happened on hardware side. 
but uh, I have uh, a big doubt from uh, past two years that with respect to the material development in India with uh, in Make in India concept, till now Inconel is the only material which is uh, developed in India and also uh, when it comes to the atomization, it's a big thing of uh, big time investment as well. So what what is the future plan of action uh, with respect to the Make in India material, uh, particularly from government point of view? So we definitely have a huge focus again in that direction. We've been talking to three players currently who are interested to come and work very closely at NCAM. In fact, they want to host themselves at NCAM itself so that they can develop their materials at NCAM and then offer it to the industry. So there are again a couple of startups which have come up over the last two to three years which are focusing heavily on the material development. Which is needed for additive manufacturing and how NCAM is going to be a part of this? Uh, by suit and this suit and that suit. You know, I mean, it comes as a standard. Because there is nothing available in the country at the moment which can replicate that. Uh, so that is where definitely great or a startup can probably look at. We, we are very willing to support in that direction. Part and started something else. Um, but we see a big opportunity. right? And so it's always tempting to go back and restart. But do we have an agency in India, you know, government level or, you know, or for somebody who has paid like me, to go back to that industry and make money, that's, that's where the challenge is in 3D printing, right? So I think there are two aspects to it. Uh, one is definitely the mentoring and you know, one is definitely the guidance which a startup needs what, while they are making a business case. I think that is where Wipro and EOS along with them can a new business. So what happened 20 years, 30 years back is that there was not many players in the market. So if I, if I invest in EOS, SLS, or India, even in Europe or US, if that is, then why not? I mean, uh, at NCAM, we're looking at, uh, as Anand also mentioned, we're looking at prosthetic, uh, the companies in Germany, in Italy, which are making a lot of money. But still, that segment we, has not been explored in the country. Uh, they flew in from Pune and Bangalore. Uh, they've been traveling for this session. So many, many thanks to all of you. Thank you so much. That was a truly insightful session and a thought-provoking one. Uh, now we'd like to present a few mementos to our panelists and speakers. Thank you so much.
help out.